Your guys, two minute warnings, because I only have one more question, so get your questions ready. And my final question to you guys is, we're all really excited about the uh, November 10th premiere of the new season. What kind of teasers can you give us? Can you give us any hints about what to expect? No. <laughs> yeah. On to you guys. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's going to be a really cool episode, and I don't want to spoil anything because uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a departure, and uh, some really funky things happen in it. So, yeah. uh, you know. I think the rug gets pulled out a little bit, and, and um, you know, my, my character certainly uh, goes through some changes this season, and there's, a, there's an episode in particular where, where we get to see her in a way we never have, and can't even imagine her as, so I think that'll be, that'll be fun for you guys. And, um, Dyson gets neutered. Yeah. Ac ac accidentally, he gets tranquilized in his wolf form. Wicks. <laughs> oh, don't, did I just blow that whole season? <laughs> Anyway, that's the end of the Dyson. I think you're gonna there. love it though. So it's gonna be a cool. It's gonna be a cool season four. It's... But then we find out in episode four that when I shift back, they grow back. <laughs> he gets his nads back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys have some questions, or have the two of these guys totally intimidated you? <laughs> um, if you could head to the side, that way everyone can hear. That'd be fantastic. Otherwise, I'm going to be like the ship's computer repeating everybody's questions, and no thanks. Hi. Um, one of my favorite Lost Girl episodes was the one, I think it was in season one, where you guys were all trapped in the bar, and all of your characters were switched between um, <laughs> everybody else. As an actor, how was that to sort of have to try to become a completely different character that you work with all the time? Amazing. Oh yeah, I mean that's such a joy when you're doing a series playing the same character for so long, which is also incredible, but to have the opportunity to, to play something totally different is a huge pleasure, you know, it really freed us all up. And it was one of the few times that we all, um, we're so rarely all in a place together on the show, like I'll do scenes with Anna or Chris or somebody, but that was one of the few times that we were actually all together, it was kind of, it was like camp for a week. Totally, it was like, it was like theater school, you know, we were all helping each other out. Um, Ksenia and I would work on, you know, I would show her Dyson stuff, and she would show me her stuff, like, and just like how she would sit, and actually, Anna and Ksenia acted out the scene that, um, um, who was the actor who played? Uh, Michael Cram. Michael Cram, who did such he, a great job. He was job. on Flashpoint for a lot of years, and then he came and did that guy on our show for that episode. And he just, he just fit right in, it was fantastic. And, like, so they would act out the scene for us, and we would just try to kind of mimic them and get into it. And, and um, it was a real collaborative feel, and uh, kind of some of the most fun we've ever had. Yeah. I played a raving lunatic, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Dyson for about Ten two seconds. two seconds, yeah. <laughs> and the guy that I, I had to play was um, he just I just had a little tiny piece of his audition tape. That's all I had, and and it literally was I don't even think it was thirty seconds or forty five seconds of him playing that guy Raynard, and that's what I had to base my entire performance on was was some the essence of whatever he brought into that audition. So and, that was and all he did was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was it. That's <laughs> what I had to work with. That's all we had to work with. So I didn't have the luxury of working with some of the other cast and figuring it out. I sort of had to build him a little bit. Thank God you're as good as you are. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Bobber. Hi. Uh, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Don't become an actor. <laughs> something that I had to kind of come to terms with and I think most actors do is that the um, and I think it's a good lesson for life is that the rejection in acting and there's so much of it at the beginning when you before you kind of take a hold of your career is that it's part of it and if you see it as something outside of acting if rejection isn't doesn't become a part of the journey for you 
then you can't do it. Like until that becomes part of the journey and it's a bit like life, you know, suffering is in life and it's just part of what we have to do. And I think that when I finally realized that a no was just part of the same thing as when I got a yes, that I, I sort of let go a lot and then my work became better. Anyway. Uh, for me it was, God, I don't know, um, there so many little moments along the way, you know, like perseverance, um, unlearning, you gotta kind of, you know, we're all, we get patterned quite early in our lives and as an actor you kind of gotta learn how to break through that stuff and um, I remember walking into my first acting class with my with this coach who was recommended to me by Michael Ironside, a great Canadian actor who did me a fantastic favor when I was young and didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I walked into this class and it was like it was like therapy session. There's like people rolling around on the floor, crying, screaming. And I just was like, what the hell is this? That was my four years of theater school. That's all we did. Yeah, and I didn't go to theater school. I, I, I don't know if some of you know this, but I came to acting through athletics and then um, kind of had to learn it all while I was started work you know, 20 years ago. And um, so it was kind of new to me. I was, you know, I was an athlete and things made sense. If I trained a little harder, I'd run one second faster. And, um, and then all of a sudden it was like, no. Read this poem and tell me how you feel. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> yeah. No, so it was, it was, uh, it was, I don't know. I'm not really answering the question. Yet. It's a lot about letting go acting, right? It's, it, is. it really is about letting go. And like, you know, uh, playing that character Raynard in that body switching episode was probably one of the scariest things I've had to do as an actor. It was terrifying. I remember thinking I, that I, what I can never do in this part is feel self-conscious. Because as soon as I start to feel self-conscious playing a character like that, it's over. So I had to go walls to the wall and just play him, no matter how unattractive I was going to look, and I did. But you, you know, if you're going to do some, some interesting work, you, you really do have to let go. Same as life. <laughs> It's true. I think Inside I'm going to studio with Zoe Paul. <laughs> I think I should sit on the edge of the stage and I should tell you what I want God to say when I get to the pearly gates. Isn't that what he always asks his yeah, guests? Something like that, yeah. Your favorite swear word and all that. I, of course, never swear, so. Next question. Yes, John. Yes, with uh, Lauren forsaking her fealty to the light and working with the anti-fae, can you see her actually starting to work with the dark, perhaps? Sure. I mean, Lauren, Lauren's one of those characters. I, ne I never know what they're going to do with her. So I'm sort of never surprised anymore what they throw at me, you know? So it wouldn't surprise me if she worked with any... She could work at McDonald's next episode. I'd be like, right. <laughs> yeah, totally, that makes sense, for sure. Hi Chris, Zoe. Um, I was wondering, while filming Lost Girl on set, what's the most unusual or funniest thing that's happened? There's so much. There's a plethora. Yeah. I think for me, most recently was just in one of the episodes we just filmed for season four. So I can't talk about it, unfortunately. But um, let me see if I can go back. I'm pretty sure you know the one I'm talking about. I, I don't think. We were in it together. In the in the pool. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um. In the pool. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, the weirdest things that's happened? Ann and I always get into laughing fits constantly. Like, we constantly start giggling. And we're the only two people that think it's funny because the crew just are like, seriously, are you done? Can we shoot the scene? And we, we typically, like, once the two of us start, it's over. It really is. And we've, and I think I've told the story before, but we actually had to stop shooting a scene once. We, we just moved on. We just, whatever we had, we had, they were like, forget it. And we just stopped shooting it. <laughs> and started shooting a different scene because we could not get through it. So stuff like that happens. I think one of the funniest ones that comes to mind is we were doing, it was a scene where all of us were together and it was about three o'clock in the morning. We were all pooped and uh, Rick Howland had to finish drawing a perfect circle on the floor. 
and he just couldn't do it to save well, his life. They they pre-drew the circle, so so most of it was drawn. About he just three had quarters. to do like he just had to finish like it a off. little bit. It was just like he literally was like and like that was funny in and of itself. <laughs> we were like, but then Casey Collins just lost his shit. And when he starts laughing hysterically, he laughs like an 80 year old grandmother. And we had no clue, like, you know, he's a cool buff kind of He guy. never loses it either. He's like even Stephen Casey Collins, right? And then he's right? literally laughing like, <laughs> That's how he laughed. And we, were all, we all stopped. We didn't know where the sound was. All, <laughs> he left. He left like, set. He just walked off. And then we see Casey in the corner like this. <laughs> and then we all just like melt down. <laughs> so it's like, oh my god. But but Rick Howland can't make a circle. Not to throw our brother Casey Collins under the bus or anything, but when he's really tired, he does laugh like a grandma. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. This isn't going to be televised anyway, right? He's going to stream this stuff. He's never going to find out. Can you say YouTube? Hey. Don't do it, Susie. <laughs> Don't you do it. Sorry. No problem. Um, hi, Zoe. Um, hi. Question. I'm not sure if you're aware, but on After Ellen a little while ago, you were awarded for being one of the best portrayed lesbian characters on television. So I'm not sure how do you feel about being a lesbian icon? It's weird. <laughs> I mean, any kind of icon would be weird, wouldn't it? I mean, but it's great. It's weird and great. It's, um, you know, it's like similar to that we never, we never really had any idea that the show would, would have the impact it has. Certainly Anna and I never imagined that the relationship between us would have the impact. And, and in retrospect, I'm not sure why, because there's so few um, same-sex relationships portrayed in any sort of a meaningful way on television so and it is one of the few something that we're really proud of um, and and it's a testament to the showrunner Emily Andras and to all of the writers who who really put a ton of thought into that relationship you know and Anna and I've had countless